Good morning church, Sunday again and I know the circumstances that we're in are not ideal for us, they're not the ones that we really want, we want to be meeting together, we want to worship together, we want to pray together, we want to do life and do church together but as keeps being said the church isn't shut, it's very much alive, our building may be closed at this time but the church isn't closed. We are the church, the body of Christ. And with some of the restrictions being lifted, we're looking at creative ways of how we can all meet together, how we can do things. I wanna encourage you again to stay connected into um, Zoom communion on a Thursday. One of the reasons I say that is the summit special about breaking bread together, remembering our Lord Jesus until he's coming, as his word says. But it's also, it's a time when we can just get out any information we want to um, in the privacy of that Zoom call. Church, as always, we love you lots. We're missing you loads. Let me pray and then we'll get on with the words. So Father, we thank you, Jesus. You are the way, you are the truth and the life. There's no other way to the Father except through you. I don't care what anybody else says. I know that Jesus Christ is Lord. I know that he's the way. I know that he's the truth. And I know that he's the life. And I know 100% there are not many ways that lead to the Father. There's just one. His name's Jesus. And so glory be to God. Every word you want spoken, let it be spoken. Nothing more and nothing less. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen, church. So today I want to look at what I call not a new season. And the reason I say that is it's quite obvious that we ourselves, we ourselves are in a new season. What will that look like after this period of time that we're going through? I, I don't know, but we'll get to that in a moment. One thing I will say on that though, I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds my tomorrow, okay? And church, if you know Jesus, Lord and Savior, you know who holds your tomorrow. So as we go into the Bible, as we look at the story of Samson, a lot of you will know the story of Samson. Okay, well, before um, we get to the end of the book of Judges, which is where you find the story of Samson, before we get to the end of the book, in chapter 15, I want to take one verse from chapter 15 to start us off. And I'll paraphrase it as we go through this, and then we'll jump into Scripture in a moment. So the story goes like this. Um, Samson's wife and father-in-law, basically, they're killed by the Philistines. Not to do a whole backstory on that, but they are killed by the Philistines. And Samson, in revenge, says, that's it, I'm not having that, I'm going to deal with those. And so he goes out after the Philistines. On his way, he finds a donkey's jawbone. He takes the jawbone and he goes and slaughters 1,000 Philistines. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon him and he defeats 1,000 Philistines. He kills them with a jawbone. Jawbone of a donkey of all weapons. That's the weapon that he picked up and he did what he had to do. Now in verse 17 of chapter 15, it literally says, after Samson had done this, jawbone threw it away. After Samson had defeated them, his greatest battle, after the Spirit of the Lord had come on Samson, he didn't take it home as a memento. He didn't say, okay, next battle, I'll use this jawbone. He threw the jawbone away. And many of us, and this is where I want to get to, many of us, we want to hold on to what worked yesterday. And actually God said, throw it away. There are new seasons for many of us to go through, but you try and hold on to the things that worked yesterday. Now, as a Christian, some things are just foundational. Some things just have to stay. For instance, your secret place must stay. The worship of God, it must stay. The simple gospel of Jesus Christ, it's our foundation. These are things that don't move, but there are tactics and weapons and the seasons that God uses, and he doesn't always need to use the same one in next week's mission or the, the month later. He can change things. He can adapt things. 
Like you got to be listening to God. You got to get into your secret place to know what weapon, if you like, what tactic, what God is saying to you for tomorrow. Samson froze the jawbone away. Many of us would have kept it. We would have kept it ready to use for any next battle that we may have had. But you see, there's new seasons, new tactics, new weapons, new wine. Okay, so you know the, the parable, don't put new wine into old wine skins or old wine into new wine skins. Well, church, you may be needing to step into a new season. You may be in a time in your life right now when you're looking at it thinking, I hate this time. Or I'm really struggling in this time. Or you may still be thinking about yesterday and God say, no, we're moving on to tomorrow. You can't hold on to the past all this time. You've got to let the past stay in the past. Easier said than done in some circumstances. I totally get that. I understand that. But today has to be a day. We've got to draw a line in the sand and we've got to say my yesterday was my yesterday. My today is my today and tomorrow I may not know what's going to happen but I know the one who holds my tomorrow. I know the one who holds my tomorrow. You see the good news, even though there's tactics that may be changing and we don't know what those tactics will be tomorrow, one thing we know about the enemy we come up against, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, lest Satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. We know his devices, we know his schemes, we know his ways. His ways never change. He just wraps them up in a different coloured bow or a different suit on it or someone else comes and says it or he tries to change the, the truth of God's words with another word. But he, his tactics never change. They never change. Don't worry about his tactics. What tactics is God giving you to step into tomorrow? Oh, weapons, a new weapon. Again, let's look at the enemy's way. We can stand on this firm rock, this firm foundation of Romans 8 verse 31. And it says, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, church, who can be against you? Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, we shall condemn. Like church, there are new seasons you're going to go into. But know this, as you're going into them, you may not know. You may not know what tomorrow brings, but you know who holds your tomorrow. Know this church, the enemy that will be waiting in your tomorrow, the enemy that will be coming at you in your next season, you are not ignorant of his devices. And you know in Romans 8, if God is for us, who can stand against us that's the promise I know and it's more than a promise it's a fact my God doesn't say summer he doesn't say summer and then all of a sudden it gets watered and washed down no way men and women they might try and water it down but not my God it doesn't work like that you see, an individual, when they gave their life to Christ, they entered the ultimate new season. Like, I get very excited about that new season so much because you could have been walking in one way and then all of a sudden you find Jesus and 2 Corinthians 5.17 just comes straight into play. And it says, if anyone is in Christ, anyone is in Christ he's a new creation the old has gone and the new has come like the old see you later new come on let's be having you like I'm telling you the old has gone and the new has come Galatians 6 verse 15 for in Christ for in Christ Jesus were neither circumcision nor uncircumcision that avails nothing that means nothing what counts is to be a new creation. When you gave your life to Jesus, you stepped from that one season into this new season. Some of you, you're already Christians. I'm not saying you need to step into the season of giving your life to Jesus, where some of you that are listening today may need to make that commitment today and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. And then we've got Christians among us listening today that there's a new season. 
There's something new happening. It's, it's springing forth and you need to go into that new season with confidence and stop holding on to yesterday. Stop trying to pick the donkey's jawbone back up. God told you to throw that away. He's got a new weapon, a new tactic. You may not know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you know who holds you tomorrow. My days, my God's pretty good. He's pretty good. He knows it all. I'm, I'm preaching this with such a confidence inside me right now. If you think like I, I look quite happy today, I'm very happy today because this message is just bringing joy and happiness to me because I'm like, I go into tomorrow knowing that he holds my tomorrow. It doesn't matter what the world says around me. It doesn't matter about the fear that's going on. It doesn't matter about the people that come against me or anything else because my God holds my tomorrow and he holds your tomorrow too. If you've chose to follow him, new season, I stepped. I stepped off the, the path of darkness, if you like. I stepped out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The moment I gave my life to Jesus, and that was the moment I could say, he holds my tomorrow. He holds my tomorrow. And he can say that for you today. If he holds your tomorrow, one other reason why I'm so excited is because I know the next part that I wanted to mention. And it's about one season, Aaron Jarvis is an addict. And you, if that defines me, if that's who I am, if that's my label, I've got no hope. i I got, I got no chance in life. But that was one season. And then the next season, Aaron Jarvis is a pastor, is a minister. Why? Because God took me from the kingdom of darkness. He placed me onto the kingdom of light. And he said, Aaron, I'll hold you tomorrow. I'm telling you, God holds your tomorrow. If I'm getting too excited for you, forgive me. But I'm so excited right now. I'm so excited right now because... I need a room for the people to jump up and down with me because God holds my tomorrow. On Thursday evening, I'll be preaching on this online crusade alongside another four or five pastors. Throughout the week, each night they'll be preaching eight o'clock. On Thursday, I'll be preaching eight o'clock. Eight o'clock online, which share it out, church. Just share it out. It's a simple gospel. I take Acts chapter three. And I, I wrap a part of my story around that, my, my deepest, hardest moment. And I just be real and I just say, have that. That's why I preach Jesus. That's why I stand on the truth. That's why. Because I was once an addict. And now I'm a pastor. Why? Because seasons, seasons in God's hands Oh, there's nothing to be fearful of, church. Nothing to be fearful. He holds you tomorrow. You see, Mordecai from the Bible. Let's jump back into the Bible. Mordecai from the Bible. One moment, one season, he is sitting outside the king's palace. The next season, he was inside the palace. Isaac, one season, Isaac, you're the sacrifice. I'm really sorry about that. The next season, Isaac is making sacrifices. One season, Joseph is in the pit, is in prison. The next season, Joseph's like the prime minister of the whole world. One season, David is a shepherd boy. The next season, David's a king. One season, Saul is killing Christians. The next season, his name's been called or changed to Paul and he's preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. One season, Ruth, she's working the field. The next season, Ruth owns that field. Come on, church. Come on, this is good stuff. John Mark, he departs from Paul and Paul, he won't have him back. That's one season. The following season, Paul's like, I want John Mark. I want John Mark. What a great worker of the gospel he is. You see, you may have let someone down a long time ago. You may have made mistakes, but God can turn it around. That one season doesn't have to define you, church. It doesn't have to hold you. It doesn't have to bind you. It doesn't have to chain you up. I'm telling you, Gideon, Gideon, he claims he's the least of all. 
But my Bible goes and tells me after there's another season and that season says he's a mighty warrior. Doubting Thomas one season, the next season Thomas could never doubt again because he saw the marks of Jesus. Better are those that haven't seen them and still believe though. Let your Bible talk to you this morning, church. Let it talk to you. Stephen was stoned one season. The next season, he just stepped straight into eternity. To live is Christ. To die is gain. I'm preaching this morning. Why? Because my God took me from the kingdom of darkness, placed me into the kingdom of life. And I'm so excited because we're going to step into a new season, church. We're going to step into a new season. Lazarus was dead. Oh my days, did God just rise him from the dead? Or should I say raise him from the dead? Oh yes, he did. Lazarus was dead and God made him alive again. That's the difference between seasons. You can be dead and then you can be full of life. You can be blind and then you can see. You can be lost and then you can be found. Esther, she was fearful. And then the next season, she was full of boldness. Joshua Oh my days, Joshua, he was following, following, following. The next season, he's leading. If you're wondering why I've said, oh my days, a couple of times, I keep saying that every time I need to catch my breath, I'm either unfit or I'm getting a bit passionate this morning. You know, God says, don't worry about your future. Don't worry about your future. He is the author of your story and he's already written the final chapter. Don't worry about your story, church. He's the author. He's the author of that book and he has written already your final chapter. You know, the greatest part of that chapter is your name will be found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make sure you know Jesus this morning, church, and if you know him, you better live for him. Why? Because he gave everything for us. The least we can do for the one that died for us, the least we can do is live for him. Isaiah 43, verse 16 to 19, it says this. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Get ready, do not remember the former things. Do not remember somebody listening today. You need to stop the former things. When I say you need to stop remembering the former things, there are certain things that happen in our lives that we can't not not remember. When my daughter died, I, I can never not remember that moment. But I don't live in that moment anymore. I'm not bound by that moment. That's what I'll be speaking on Thursday. I'm not bound by that moment anymore. Yes, it's had an effect on me. Yes, it's, it's shaped a part of me. But who, who put me back together? Jesus put me back together. He took me from the place of darkness and brought me into the place of light. And so I don't dwell on the former things. I can look back at a gate called beautiful and I can say, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful place. Behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm telling you that God can do more than you can ever imagine or expect. He can do more. He, he can do greater. Hold on to him, grab on to him, whatever season you're going through. We're always, we're always stepping into new days. You may not know what's going to happen tomorrow, but do you know the one who holds you tomorrow? I know the one who holds my tomorrow. I fear nothing. You see, Peter, Peter walked on water briefly. Peter also stuck his foot in his mouth and denied Jesus three times. Way to go, Peter. Didn't you walk with Jesus for three years? Thank goodness for people like Peter. That Jesus says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my church upon this rock. Thank goodness. Because we can look at Peter and we're not being disqualified because of the mistakes we made. But Peter, he walks on water briefly, looks around. 
He takes his eyes off Jesus. He starts to sink. There's a message in that for you. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. You'll sink in this world if you do. Hold on to him. Hold on to the anchor. He's a security in our life. He's the way. He's the truth and he's the life. I'm not sure if I told you that this morning. But that's the gospel. That's the truth. There's no other way to the Father except through Jesus. He is the only way. Peter denies Jesus three times. Someone's getting fed up with my shouting. Well, as Rhino Bonke says, you may not like the way I preach, but I like it. And I like the way I preach. I told my wife one week I'll get that in. And today's the day. I only told her yesterday. You see, God used Peter. God used Peter still after he walked on water briefly. After he denied Jesus three times, he used him on the day of Pentecost to bring 3,000 people to him. A new season, maybe. Maybe you disappointed some people in your past and you thought your season was over. I I remember being out of church for two years. I thought I'd blown it all. I'd blown it all. I'd been let go from a previous place. I'd I'd made mistakes, I'd I'd done wrong, I I thought I'd blown it all. And God turned it around. He taught me how to to move forward. He taught me how to deal with disappointment. He, He taught me how to deal with forgiveness. He taught me how to deal with so many things that were needed. It had to be my firm foundation, ready to be propelled into the next season of my life. He taught me. You see, Jonah was running in the wrong direction. Like Jonah's gone like, I ain't going there. It's gone in the wrong direction. Jesus, like like a cartoon, you know, get, gets the, the rope, swings it around, pulls him back. Come on. Like Jonah runs in the wrong direction. God sends a big fish and says, sailors, will you just pop him in the water for me? I'm taking him where I'm meant to take him. Because the season where he's running wrong, we're going to have a season where he runs right. And people are going to repent and turn. Because my ways are greater. My ways may not be your way and your way may not be my way. But you know what? I want to put my trust in God. I want to leave him with it. I may not know what's going to happen tomorrow. That's right. But we know who holds that tomorrow. The widow and the child. The widow and her child, like, they're going to die. There's nothing else left. You're like, what story is this? You'll get it in a moment. The widow and the child, they're going to die. There's there's nothing left. They've got one meal left. Come on. In steps Elijah. In steps the man of God. He walks into their house and everything changes. It's a new season. Maybe someone's about to step into your life and it's a new season. God's not finished with you. Put him first. Put him first. He's not finished with you. He's not finished. He's not put you on the heat pile. If there's breath in your lungs, you're still very much alive. And you know, God's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. He's the God of the living. One day, the man of God, Elijah, walked into the widow's house and everything changed for that family. And everything can change for you today if you'd allow Jesus to walk into your life. John 10.10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. And that may be the season that you've only ever known where the thief came and stole and killed and destroyed the things of your life. But the next part of the verse says this, but Jesus comes and you may have life and have it in its fullness. And if today all you know is one season, I want to offer you a new season. I want to offer you a season with Jesus. And it's not by my words, but it's by your heart and it's by your tongue confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God so loved the world. He so loved you. And he wants to take you into a new season. And he says to you, he says, today, know that I am Lord. Know that I am Lord. Repent. 
The word repent, yes, means sorry, but it's more than that. It's saying, I had my my trust in the world. I had my focus in the world. My morals are in the world. Everything's of the world, but I'm repenting. I'm turning, and I'm turning to face you, Jesus. And now I'm asking you, Lord, will you take control of my life? Will you be the steering wheel? Will you be my conscience? Will you be the one that shows me the way? I want to please you now. I've tried it that way way and it never worked and now I hand over my life to you I hand over my life to you if there's anybody that says I need to exchange my old life for a new life I need to change this old season for a new season and you don't know Jesus that's the start of being able to say it's the start of being able to say I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but I know who holds my tomorrow to God be the glory To God be the glory. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus and you want to know him, please get in touch with us. Get in touch with us. I want to lead you to Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. There's no other way. And while I'm at it, let me catch my breath. Congratulations, Michelle, on the birth of your new baby. I was going to call him Paolo or Pablo or something. I forgot his name already. Forgive me, Michelle. I'm rubbish at names. Be blessed. We're praying. For little man, the youngest, newest member of the church. And I pray by the end of this message, by the time we put our phones down, by the time we turn our TVs off, somebody just became part of the church of God. Someone just became part of the family of Jesus Christ. As they say, I want to give my life to Jesus. To God be the glory. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place. Lord, you'll build your church in case the vision's trying to get watered down or forgotten about. Not that it will in this place. We're going to plant churches from here to the coast, into Europe and into the world. And all the glory will be given unto Jesus because Jesus will build his church. Lord, for the congregation at Londonderry whether Iranian or Brazilian or English or or Birmingham, Albury, wherever, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, not one shall receive COVID-19. In Jesus' name, let there be a separation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let there be a covering over this church, Lord, as we put our trust in you. To God be the glory. I know I keep saying to God be the glory, but he's the only one that deserves it. I don't know if I told you, but he saved me. He set me free. He took me from the kingdom of darkness and he brought me into the kingdom of light. You check out the online crusade this week. Just share it away. I know you're already giving your life to Jesus. If you know Jesus, it's not about that. It's about who can you pass it to. Freely we've received. Now freely we must give. Amen. Be blessed, church. Love you lots. I know I've shouted. I know I've rambled on a lot. But I'm passionate for Jesus because he saved me. He set me free. Amen. To God be the glory.